One evening, as I was passing through the dining hall of the restaurant of which I was acting chef de la cuisine, I met Anatoly, a wealthy returning guest, who asked me to join him at the table. In the casual conversation that followed, I told him I was leaving the chef's position and explained in short that I'm planning to open my own place, which should be a modern Asian restaurant with the New York feel a nice design and original cuisine. He then asked some questions about budget and return investment, for which I didn't have ready answers, but somehow I managed to sound convincing. The next day I received a phone call. Hi, a man said, my name is Hanan, calling on behalf of Mr. Anatoly. Yes, I answered, and Anatoly continued. He said, I talked to my partner and we decided to take your offer. Offer? Which offer? We just discussed for a few minutes. Said, no, no, it's okay, we take the offer. Send us budget and business plan. And that's basically how my story begins. So I have always told myself two things. One, I will open my own restaurant. And two, I will only open a restaurant once I have something original to say. So at the age of 30, after 10 years of cooking and managing the best kitchens in Israel, and also staging abroad in three-star Michelin restaurants, I had set my mind. I'm ready to create my own restaurant. Ever since, I found the Asian cuisine the most interesting and appealing of cuisines. And since Asian restaurants had barely existed at that time in Israel, it seemed like the right direction to pursue. I knew that to build what I vaguely had in mind, I, will, I would have to fly, search, and find my inspiration in Asia. But as you know, Asia is too big and diverse. It consists of many countries, many kitchens, and many ethnic influences. Therefore, I've chosen five Southeast Asian countries to focus on for my inspiration. China, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, and India were the chosen countries. The Chinese and Indian kitchens are the biggest and the most influential, while the three others are somewhat a mixture of the two, together with local ingredients and colonial influences. Then I called my two sous chefs and asked them to join me along this journey. I chose a good camera and a traveling route between five countries. Quite excited and a bit scared, a little like I feel now, I started searching for all must-eat foods culture and history of the countries. And then like this, off we went, a delegation that was supposed to explore the amazing world of food of Southeast Asia. So what had we? We had five countries, around 120 days, 360 meals, roughly 200 dumplings, 50 noodle dishes, 50 rice dishes, 50 curry dishes, one turtle, one snake, and just two incidents of food poisoning. <laughs> Once back, I started thinking again. I knew that creating a pan-Asian restaurant is not an easy task, especially if you want to re become original and create new dishes. So having traveled through Asia had me realize that the real truth the origin of food lays in the streets and not in fancy restaurants. The streets and markets are crowded with many food stalls, with an amazing variety. Everything happens around that. Friends meet, talk, drink, make business, or just simply hang out. So this revelation led me to focus on the street food of the five countries. Simplicity is probably the name of the game. Taking a simple, well-executed dish, understanding its technique and idea behind it, is an excellent ground for deconstruction and afterwards creative reconstruction. Quite different than taking a dish from a high-end restaurant, a fancy restaurant, which has already been copied, reconstructed, and therefore making it almost impossible to understand the original idea. I started meeting our um, interior designers, branding people, architects. I showed them pictures of my journey, the food and people, colors, symbols, markets. 
gave the, my speech on how I see the uh, ambience and feel of the restaurant. But I think we all lacked an understanding of how to connect all the dots and forge a harmony between food, design, and all different aspects of the restaurant. I had a wish to create an innovative restaurant. And this wish made me look at everything from a different angle. I've studied philosophy for a while in the university, and I remember a chapter on Chinese philosophy, specifically the five elements. The five elements have to do with everything in life. And I found they're connected in a particular order. Water connects to wood, which connects to fire, earth, and finally metal. Searching deeper, I found an amazing connection to food. I found that water represents salty taste and mild flavors. Wood is sour, fire is bitter, earth is sweet, and metal is umami, and with the most intense flavors. So then I thought, this is how I should be in my menu, divided into these five elements. So a guest can start his journey with milder flavored items that fee and finish off with the full flavored ones. Our palate works a little bit like a muscle, it remembers. So given a heavy taste, followed by a light taste, the last will barely be felt. Think of eating butter chicken, followed by tuna sashimi. So obviously the tuna sashimi delicate flavors will be hardly felt. So I took this understanding of the five elements back to my designers. They were all excited that we can all work together with the language that can connect interior, exterior, food, everything, all together. My father is a scientist, and as a young boy, I spent much time in his lab, looking through microscopes and, and observing the world of understanding processes. As a good result, probably, I knew that understanding, tasting, and tasting will give me the edge in creating, so I then rented a kitchen lab for us to practice. We spent four months creating the science, which led to an innovative, wonderful menu. Also, the five element guidelines had made me think outside the box. And I had to come up with unusual pairings, together with modern presentation. And it came out just surprisingly amazing. I've also incorporated the term Asia Terranian Kitchen. The term consists of two walls, Asia and the Mediterranean, and the fusion between the two. A chef cannot overlook his local area, and Israel is blessed with amazing produce. So combining ingredients such as yogurt, olive oil, tahini, and many other specialties had enabled me to create many original dishes, and it has since became an integral part of my menu. I hired young industrial designers, gave them my brief of the five elements, and showed them some dishes which need a creative design to support them. We searched for all the right five elements filled to plates, cup holders, waste basket, cone holders, fish holders, and all this to maintain the same harmony between all different aspects of the restaurant. Nowadays, a good restaurant must serve excellent food, but it must also tell a good and unique story. <laughs> Your guest must feel the story surrounding him upon entering and while leaving a strong memory remaining. Therefore, I say to stand out in the crowded market of restaurants, a restaurateur must come up with his own language, a language which should enable him to create his own unique story. Two years passed since I opened Taizu. Every day, still, I try to master old dishes and create new and exciting dishes which lay on the same foundations I have laid since the beginning. I spend much time listening to my guests their requests and wishes. Many come up to me and mention how different their experience was. 
Although I think they cannot pinpoint what exactly made their experience so different. I think I can. And by now, I hope, so can you. Thank you.